Hi, everybody. Um, can everyone hear me? <laughs> That's my first question. Um, I'm Kristen Gilpatrick, Marketing Director for Wisconsin Historical Society Press. You haven't missed anything yet. We're going to start in about three minutes. I'm just testing the volume and getting this started. I don't think you can hear me while I'm mixing. <laughs> Back up. We'll start story time live in a few minutes. I'm just mixing up some of my heavy cream to get it started because we won't have time to do it um, the full extent. I'm actually turning this heavy cream into butter, which is something you can do by hand or with an electric mixer like this. See if this works. I'm just going to check and see if if folks can hear me. All right. Keep an eye on the time. Give everybody just another minute to join us. I'm just checking to make sure that we are rolling. <laughs> All right, excellent. If you can see, you'll see that this heavy cream is getting quite thick now. Um, and I'm going to take a break, and as it thickens up, we're going to get started. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Kristen Gilpatrick. Um, I am the marketing manager for Wisconsin Historical Society Press, and today we're going to be sharing a little bit of our food and food ways history that was uh, written for kids uh, by cookbook author Therese Allen and educator Bobby Malone for our book, Flavor of Wisconsin for Kids. It contains a lot of simple recipes um, from a wide variety of foods. Uh, everything from dairy and corn to venison and as we're gonna learn today, maple syrup. Um, and lots of different ethnic recipes in here as well. All easy for younger, inexperienced cooks to try. Um, and it's got a lot of the stories of how food got to our table uh, in Wisconsin, especially Wisconsin foods. Like, for example, um, you know, it's hard to believe that something as sweet as maple syrup can come from the trunk of a tree. It's also amazing that people in the Wisconsin region have been enjoying maple syrup for hundreds, even thousands of years. It's an ancient tree that comes right from our forests. I bet some of you have made pancakes before, and I bet you tried my maple syrup on it. Um, well, long, long time ago, right up to today, in fact, um, American Indians actually got syrup right out of the trees. They still do. They boil it down, um, and they sometimes, when it snows really early in the spring, you can actually put a little uh, boiled maple syrup, let your parents do it, out on the snow and it hardens into candy. I've tried that, it's very good. Um, today we're gonna learn how to combine two of Wisconsin's most well-known ingredients um, into something really yummy, uh, June, the month that's coming up starting on Monday is dairy month. And so one of the things that Wisconsin, the dairy state is known best for is butter, a product of milk, right? Milk, butter, cheese, and my favorite ice cream. Today, we're gonna to try two recipes, one with butter and one with ice cream. First thing we're gonna learn how to do is make some homemade butter and then add maple syrup to it, which makes really yummy toast and pancakes and you name it. So um, I got some heavy whipping cream at the store. So next time you go to the grocery store, this is something you, you probably don't have on hand. It's sort of the one ingredient that you're probably gonna need to get at the store along with some real maple syrup works best rather than um, just 
a sugary imitation maple, maple flavor syrup, but the real stuff is great. Um, so what I did was I poured this pint of heavy cream into a bowl, a deep bowl, should be at room temperature, and it came out like milk, and you'll see how thick it's kind of becoming in there. And you keep heating it, like I am, and it'll eventually turn into butter. It'll start to make little chunks and slowly, slowly become actual butter that people can use to spread out toast, and you name it. It'll look a lot like this. This is the butter I got in the store. Um, and what's nice about this, in the recipe in the book, it says that you need eight tablespoons of butter. This is a tablespoon. You could scoop out some and measure eight of those and put it in a bowl. The, the butter has to be very soft. See how this squishes in my hand? That's very soft. This already is eight tablespoons of butter. Look at that. And look at what's happening inside my bowl. This is all becoming chunks, little tiny chunks in there. And that is making butter. And you can see a little bit of liquid forming in there. And eventually that is gonna become butter. Um, I am going to maybe keep stirring this for a minute. How long this takes depends a little bit on how warm it is in your kitchen, um, how warm your butter is. If it's too cold, it won't work. Um, and now, now hopefully you can really see the chunks in there and how it's kind of getting liquidy in some places. And what you're going to do is drain off um, the liquid in here. So that you just have the butter okay and it's becoming really liquidy now i don't know if you can see look at this in my hands that is butter made on a heavy cream of milk and i am just going to quickly strain a little bit of this you would actually beat this just a little bit longer but it for time i'm going to do it this way um so that you can kind of see. I push it down a little bit, get some of the water out. And then you run a little cold water over this too to sort of drain it. Um, and mold it into a little bit of butter. Look at this, everybody. We've got butter. I'm going to put it into this littler bowl so you can all see it. And some people like to add salt to their butter. You could add a little bit of salt. I even have a little bit of salt that I could add to this right now. Um, and when we're done, if your mom and dad are around, they'll be able to find this recipe. I'm going to post this recipe right here uh, where the video is so that you can see it um, and try and make it yourselves, too, if you're not following along right now. Look at that. i got to scoop it out. It's so thick. So you could add just a little bit of salt. It's optional. I just give it a little squeeze or two, a little tiny bit of salt, and kind of mix it together. Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have butter made kind of the old fashioned way. The real old fashioned way would be to do it by hand in what was called a butter churn. Um, you could go out to one of our historic sites when things open up again, um, like Old World Wisconsin, and see them churning butter by hand in a in kind of a big tub with a stick that pushes the cream down over and over again. It was a lot of hard work to do that. Um, or if you can't make butter on your own, just open up this stick, put it in a bowl, whip it up a little bit. And then I'm going to turn to my maple butter recipe. It's right here. Uh, this one. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to turn there so I can see how to make the, the butter or the maple butter spread for my toast. So I have the butter ready and I take one quarter cup of real maple syrup. This is the real stuff. Got this from an Amish neighbor actually, but you can get it from the grocery store too. And I'm going to pour in says a quarter cup. I'm going to do just a little bit less because we really didn't um, 
drain off this butter the way you normally would. So I don't want it to get too liquidy on me. Um, and you whip the mixture, your maple mixture, just a little bit more. Turn it on very low, and you have to have your mom or dad help you with the mixer, okay? Because as you can see, for me, it's kind of messy. And that's okay, because then you have the activity afterwards of cleaning up. And hopefully you guys have already begun your cooking by washing your hands like I did. And so then you can touch the food you're going to be serving and making. And so I'm just going to put, you can put a little maple butter spread right on your toast. And you know what? I know that you can't try it right now on the video. You can't taste what I'm trying, but I'm going to try it and see how it tastes like this. Mmm. Now what that tastes like, that tastes like a pancake with maple syrup on it. That is really good. Really good. Great way to have a little something different on your toast. Um, it's really kind of sweet. I bet it would go good with a lot of things. I bet it would even go good on pancakes or waffles. Why not? Um, so that is our maple butter spread. And you know what else? That You can be as creative as you want. You know, when you make that butter, you could, instead of maple syrup, you could add some um, different herbs, you know, a little basil or some garlic. Now you have garlic butter. They do that in restaurants sometimes, so you guys could experiment, you know. Cooking is science. A lot of people don't know that, um, but now you do. So I have one other little recipe that we're going to try, and it too features maple syrup and dairy. Uh, Wisconsin's the dairy state. Coming up in June, it's celebrating dairy month. Um, so why not have one of my favorite dairy treats? Uh, I'm just going to turn around for a second. And grab something out of the freezer. See if you can guess what this is. Now this works best, I think, with vanilla ice cream. Okay, but you know what? You can use any ice cream. You can try it. What tastes good with maple syrup? Anything really, I guess. Um, I'm just going to take a scoop or two. Let's do two of vanilla ice cream. There we go. Two scoops. I'm going to work it out of your scooper. There. All right. Two scoops of vanilla ice cream. And then... Um, you take as much maple syrup as you want. I have a little bit left. There's a whole recipe for this called Maple Cream Sundaes. There in the book. Um, I think you can probably see the picture of some of the maple syrup that gets sold in the stores too. And this particular recipe, which is super good this way, Teresa Allen, the chef, knows what she's doing with ingredients. She suggests that you put pecans on top, along with the maple syrup. Crush them up. You know what? I didn't have any pecans, and it's hard to get to the grocery store these days. So I took some salted peanuts that I had, which are also yummy on ice cream, and I put them in a little bag, because I didn't have them that are crushed. But don't worry about that, because you can crush them yourself. And I've discovered that this is a good way to get up, a, up out a little pent up energy that we all seem to have these days. So you can take a rolling pin or, um, I'm not sure, sure about a salt shaker, add mom and dad, ask mom and dad, but something heavy. And you kind of crush it up like that. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. Oh. And you break out into, oh! there we go, sorry about that. <laughs> That's a little piece of history too, culinary history. For thousands of years, people have been picking up their spills in the kitchen. Also historic. Let's do this. There we go. Now, what does she say to do? To make the sundaes, we scoop the ice cream into a cup. We did that. Pour some maple syrup over it. Okay, I'm pouring some maple syrup. Ooh. Can you see how it shines on there? 
And then we're going to take some of the pecans, or in this case, salted peanuts. I'm going to sprinkle them on top, just like that. And I'm going to try it. Oh, I wish you could just try it right through the camera because I think it's going to be so good. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> mm. Well, you know what, everybody? That's our story time for today. I'm going to stop so I can enjoy this ice cream before it melts. But there's just lots and lots more recipes in this book. Um, there are different chapters. You can find some of them online on our website and try them at home. There are stories about how cranberries became so popular in Wisconsin and why we're the dairy state. You can learn all about those things and try some recipes at home. Um, so I encourage you to whip up a little butter, try some maple syrup, maybe something else with it, um, and enjoy a little bit of history. We know history is informational. We know it's educational. We know it's inspiring. But you know what? It's yummy, too. Give it a try and enjoy the flavors of Wisconsin. Have a great day, everyone.